Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And today, I've got a special treat. We're actually joined by my friends Anthony and Ryan from over at Benchmade. They're here to show us some of the uh, the new 2021 lineup that is just kind of hot off the presses here. How are you guys doing? Doing great over here. Yeah. Yeah, doing awesome. Excellent. Looking well, forward to uh, discussing the new product with you. Yeah, thank you for, yeah, for uh, sure. thank you for coming by. We really appreciate your time. Um, but let's... Uh, Let's jump right into it. Um, so I've got samples of most of the stuff here in front of me. Uh, why don't we start with the the new gold class knife so far this year? Mm. Yeah, the 601. Um, yeah, so that one has a, a material called uh, Bifrost Damasteel on it. Um, the uh, product line guy who, who uh, set that one up basically kind of had this story, this crazy story of, he, I asked him about it, I, I wanted to get it right. So it's Nordic Winters and Norse mythology, the Rainbow Bridge. So it's like kind of this cold uh, North um, Scan Nordic winter type theme. Mm -hmm. So you have this white uh, and black marble carbon fiber mixed with the uh, the Damasteel there. So you get this crazy play plus the blue shield, uh, which gives it that icy cold look. Mm -hmm. And then the backspacer on that is, a, is kind of a glow in the dark color changing refere. And so when that when the sun hits it, it changes color and then also glows. So it's kind of this like midnight glowing winter kind of thing. Interesting. And uh, it's just yeah, it just it, it looks kind of crazy when you see all the all together. But that was the theme behind it. So you trying to put some story to it. No, I really like that backspacer, especially I didn't even realize it glowed. Yeah. Um, I just saw kind of the translucence and the uh, the material running through it which I don't know that I've ever seen Rafir used as a, a backspacer before. And I think it right. looks really fantastic, especially with a, des a design like this, where you've got a lot of patterning and a lot of texture going on. And it does yeah. glow, Anthony, right in the dark, I believe. Yeah. I, haven't, I actually haven't turned the lights off with that yeah. one yet, but I do know. Yeah, there's a lot going on on that guy. Yeah, it's um, crazy. You know, and, you know, the 601 was introduced last year for us with Jared Oser. And um, as everybody knows, Jared Oser is a custom knife designer out of Utah. And, uh, you know, we got to present this knife to him in person this, uh, this past year and, uh, just seeing his face and his reaction to just a different take on one of, you know, how he would traditionally do, you know, uh, do a custom on his end. Mm -hmm. Um, it definitely has a lot more bells and whistles and he's definitely more of that on the modern jet side. Um, so it was cool to kind of come together as a group and, uh, you know, bring this to life. It's definitely got that kind of vibe too, and still high performance. You know, Damasteel being a powder powdered metal material, yeah. it's not yeah. just for looks. No, no it's not just for looks. It's <laughs> actually for use too. Awesome. Very functional. Very very cool little knife uh, and uh, gold class. It's going to be limited to this year, or will be available going Correct. forward. All right. Yeah. One very year. nice. All right. Um, next up, I've got uh, folks have seen this new uh, mini Osborne from a couple of months ago. But you're kind of bringing back the uh, the classic color on the second version yeah. of this knife. Yeah. So you know, I think the the new 945 is is that expected color, right? It was what everybody expected to see, and um, you know, with the you know with the sequential numbering of the 945 BK-1, you know, if if you know how we you know name our knives, you knew that there was a 945 coming, right? And uh, you know, we wanted to. We wanted to hit the market with something different at first with the 945 BK-1. And then we wanted to make sure, you know, just paying homage to the original 940. We basically brought that to life uh, in in the same colors, materials that the, you know, everybody loves mm -hmm. in the 940. So you get the anodized aluminum handles, S30B blade steel. You still get that same color pop, but in the barrel spacers on right. the back. So a little bit easier um, but, to clean out than that uh, that old yeah. closed back version. Yeah, a little easier to clean out. Um, you know, brings the weight down a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, you know, the excitement just on the 945 family is just, it's been incredible. Um, I, I honestly, you know, one of the knives we'll show you guys where you're going to show in a few minutes was a knife that kind of stayed in my pocket all year until the 945 uh, kind of came out. I, it's found its way in my pocket and I use it on a daily basis. And it's a great size knife, mm -hmm. um, easy to carry, doesn't, you know, imprint crazy. It's it's just a great, great all around uh, EDC knife. And it's not too aggressive looking, like it's going to fit no. in. Yeah. It's, some people think it's a gentleman's knife or a gentleman's tactical knife. It's somewhere in between, but yeah, it's, it's sort of a non-threatening, just very capable, small little design. 
Exactly. And, you know, the original design of the 940 was that was a hard use ranchers, you know, built for ranching and, you know, but also had the, I would say, looks and feel of something like a gentleman's EDC mm -hmm. knife. Um, and that was Warren's, you know, original intent with the 940. So bringing that over in a smaller compact version, um, you know, I think it just it's a perfect little EDC knife. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, I used to have one, but my wife took it. So it's gone. I don't know where it is. She oh. said she really liked it. That'll happen sometimes. So I'm, 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 yeah. glad you have, I'm glad you have one. <laughs> this is my everyday now. Oh, boy. Yeah, very, very nice little design. I'm excited to see it uh, expanding so quickly after the, uh, the first initial model has been released. I'm, that's really nice. Oh, yeah. All right, well, next up is a knife that's actually available right now is the new iteration yeah. of the Mini Bug Out. Yeah, so talking about mini knives, right? We just came from the 945 Mini Bug Out. I mean, this is kind of the, uh, I would say, you know, the continuation of minis for us. And, you know, we, we launched the Mini Bug Out last year. And again, you know, talking about colors and uh, options, you know, we, we originally introduced the orange, uh, version of the mini bug out was definitely more, I would say, outdoor enthusiast EDC inspired. And then we had the white version, right? And the white version was to appeal to a different demographic altogether, kind of the DIY demographic. And then also, hey, you know, just more EDC um, on that end. Well, the biggest question we got when we introduced it was, why didn't you guys do a black version? <laughs> well, we do have a method to our madness, believe it or not. And uh, we knew that that was going to be a massive request was, you know, an all blacked out version. So what we wanted to do is just, you know, it, it's a it's a, ca a carbon footprint of the uh, 535 BK-2 that we released last year. So you're going to get the CF Elite handles, S30V blade steel, and uh, the S30V is uh, DLC coated as well. So um you know everything you like in the 535 bk-2 but now in the mini bug out so all blacked out what everybody would have expected and uh, i think wants in the marketplace definitely and what i like about that cf elite material is just well one it's it's something cool and new but i also like that it's it's black but it's not quite black it's like yeah. that it's dark like graphite yeah it, yeah spices it makes it look a little more uh dimensional i think yeah and i mean the crazy thing about the cf elite too is that it actually adds a bit of strength to the handle material and then it also reduces weight slightly mm -hmm. so you know what already was a extremely lightweight extremely strong knife is you know has a little bit added strength in the handles and as well as being a little bit lighter yeah, yeah a little a bit, bit lighter stiffer. yeah and you've got that great blade size both of these last two knives with that kind of just under three inch blade length. I mean, I, I used to carry a mini Griptilian for a number of years uh, in my office job because that was actually my max, was a three inch blade at the time. So to have okay. more options and some great cutting geometry options, especially on this bug out, I love it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's a saying around the office, minis are hot and and they're hot, man. People want them <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're eating them up in the marketplace. So we we will continue pumping them out. Very cool. Uh, well, that's not the only bug out news, of course. We've got uh, a couple yeah. of new full size variants as well. Yeah, I so these are a couple of my favorites. Uh, yeah. So first, we'll hit the five thirty five dash three, which is the carbon fiber version there. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know the knife that was in my pocket, and uh, I had a really hard time kicking it out of my <laughs> pocket uh, until the nine forty five BK dash one came out. This was my go to EDC knife. Um, you know, the bug out is just a, a well-rounded EDC knife. It's super lightweight. Um, and it's just, it, you know, it's a compact carry and it's great for just all around use. Um, so what we wanted to do here was start introducing some new premium materials into the bug out. Um, and as you guys know, the 940-1, uh, which is carbon fiber with blue accents, S90V, it's a, it's a staple platform for us and a staple look at Benchmade. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to bring that to life uh, in the bug out. Um, you also notice in the back end of, the, of this version, we introduced a new uh, backspacer uh, that is a additional lanyard uh, hole as well. Um, so it actually adds some rigidity to the knife, adds some different function, um, kind of doubles as maybe a bottle, bottle cap opener as well. Uh, lanyard hole, et cetera. 
but overall, you've got you know carbon fiber handles with a nice contour on there. Yep. Great ergonomics. Uh, S90V blade steel, so that's something new into the bug out family. A ton as well. of edge retention um, there. Yeah. yeah, so it's just a great all around knife. Um, you know, I I've used it from everything from EDC carry to taking it in the field hunting with me as you know my backup folder. Mm -hmm. um, I take it, that I, what's that? You went hunting with that, huh? Oh yeah. Wow. All right. With yeah, one of cool. these, one of these S90 versions. Yeah, three ten. Yeah, this is actually it right here. It's it's, it's well used. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of my favorites, to be honest. Um, and like I said, it was very hard to kick out of my pocket, but the 945 DAC, uh, BK-1 is in there now. But um, yeah, yeah, love it. And then what I've uh, always, yeah, what I've always said about this particular knife is it's a lightweight knife, but it's got a full sized cutting experience to it. Yeah. I mean, you, you can just get for me, at least all four of my fingers on there. You got that great contour on this carbon fiber one now, especially and just, just enough blade to do all the stuff. It's not too big, not too small, and it's nice and thin and just a slicing machine. I'm a sucker for carbon fiber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I cut you off there for a second. You were about to go to the uh, the next one? Yeah, so the 535 BK-4 is another new one for us. Um, so this will come out later in the year, uh, but this is definitely, again, capitalizing on premium materials, premium handle materials, and then going into another new blade steel as well. But we'll start with the handle. Um, as you can see on that handle, it's it's a little bit more intricate of a design than the carbon fiber. It's a, a aluminum handle that's CNC. And uh, our friend Ryan here designed a really cool pattern that radiates off of the pivot. Um, and that's all milled directly into that handle. So it actually, it almost looks like a sunburst coming yeah. off of that pivot. and just really draws your eye and there's a ton of detail in that handle and the, the contour again, um, going into the palm swell is great, even into the spine. Um, you get some red accents in the barrel spacers and then on the blade steel again, introducing M390. Um, and I, I know people have been really excited about this. This is a, you know, completely new addition to the bug out and everybody loves M390. Um, and I've seen a lot of people just, you know, excited from that uh, standpoint as well. Yeah, it's a great steel. Ryan, you did a great job on, on the handle patterning here. I, I really am digging this aluminum version right here. Hey, thank the machinists. I just do the sketches. Hey, <laughs> get it started. Get it started. Those guys do the hard work. I'll let you thank but, them uh, for me. I don't have their numbers. Yeah, they, well, I'll tell them thanks. They but it, it feels, feels great to my hand. The pattern is nice. You get a little bit of extra traction from it, but it's not sharp in any way. Like it's not digging in. Uh, in any sort of uncomfortable way. It's just a little extra, which I like. Yeah. I think a lot of people like these because they're, you know, they kind of tie into the tough, the custom market. You know, a lot of people put scales, they do the thing, you know, make it how they want. I think this just kind of addresses some of that. And I think, I think people, you don't have to go change it. They're, yeah. They look good on their own and and you're good to go. You get some cool custom materials. And yeah, I like that carbon fiber one. I, I didn't know you went hunting with it, but that's, you know, that's pretty cool. That's good stuff. Yeah. I like it. Modern hunter. Right? Yeah. Blue is the new orange. No, I. <laughs> yeah, you should have used the uh, the mini in orange. That's right. There you go. <laughs> but no, I I dig it. Like the color is really nice. It's almost like a an extremely light blue to it. A little bit of stone washed uh, patterning, maybe at least on this prototype I'm holding here. Yeah. Yeah. Knocked it out of the park, man. Thank you. It's a fun one. Very cool. Well, I think uh, even bigger news to me than the uh, the new bug out stuff is actually uh, the Adamas family is back and it's got a pretty significant upgrade this time around. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you have any of those? I do yeah, actually. I I've I, got I uh, the fixed blade and the full size are back. And then you guys have brought out the new mini version as well. Yep. Yeah. My wife took those too. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> that's a lie that's a lie so obviously <laughs> yeah, you know, so, adamas has always been a great hard use yep. folder i mean i've i've seen i've had right. some knife making friends of mine just absolutely beat the snot out of these things to see what they could do and that was just with the d2 blades but now we've got an even tougher steel on board yeah crew wear so we put a crew wear in there um and so the main the main exercise with this one, obviously these have been popular for a long time. People really like the Adamas family. So what we did with this is we kind of went back to Shane Seibert's original design 
you know, he does a, a lot, you know, he's a custom knife maker. So he does, you can see the, the fuller in there, you know, the original one that he did went all the way under the handle. So mm -hmm. we did that. We we're a lot of this stuff kind of comes from just getting comfortable with, you know, different technologies that we have, different machining capabilities that we have maybe now that we didn't have in the past, subtle things. And then also giving the handles just a slight bit of contour. So you're taking a little bit of weight out. We, we did a lot of kind of, I don't know, trimming the fat on these mm -hmm. things. Just got them yeah. back for that. You know, because the, the original customs are always so tight and cool and everything has just got a little bit more to it. And so we were able to get a lot more of that back into the design. I would say we kind of went back to where, you know, the origins of this thing. And I think that, um, you know, he appreciates that, of course, because, you know, it's his design. And we want to try to, you know, replicate that as good as we can. Plus, you know, the users get it, uh, the benefit of having a, a bit lighter platform, mm -hmm. still just as strong. I mean, you're, the, the, the mechanism itself and the positioning of that didn't change. So you're not losing anything. You're just gaining a bit of comfort. Yeah. And then also the custom colorways, you know, we we really looked at, you know, what's hot in the market for, you know, custom rifles, um, different platforms that people are going with, you know, it's not just, you know, flat, dark earth and black anymore. There's a lot of mix and match and it kind of harkens to that, you know, build your own rifle kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, there's just, a, it's, it's kind of okay. interesting. The colors are subtle, but there's a lot of uh, different variety out there and people trying to, you know, separate themselves. So we, we took that as an opportunity to give these some different, almost custom tactical colorways, I guess you could say. Yeah. No, I think they came together really well. And and a note about the handles, especially, I couldn't put my finger on why until you mentioned it, but these do feel just like working from memory. They're a little bit yep. more comfortable than the old versions were. Right. Not, not that they were yeah. uncomfortable, but they were for some people, I think a little yep. on the blocky side, perhaps. Yeah. This yep. definitely goes uh, goes away to addressing that for sure. It feels very good, I have to say. Yeah, and then you know another change in the handle design too is you know removing the backspacer and going to barrel spacers. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. As well, yeah. There's. It's funny because you know when you start putting the knives side by side, you know the original version to the new versions, and you see the changes and width and contour in the handle, the backspacers, the barrel spacers, you know the fuller design. It's a. It, it's a lot when you see yeah. it and <clears throat> when you hold it in hand, it's, it's even more impressive. And I, I actually got the um, pleasure of delivering these to Shane uh, a while back and cool. getting to see his face and, you know, nice him checking it out and seeing his new versions of it. And he was really excited to see kind of where this had gone and uh, what we, we, what we had done to update it. Yeah. No, I yeah, think, I mean, when you, when you get a custom knife from a custom maker, you know, they're so nice. Like everything is just so dialed in. And if you can try to replicate that, it just makes it that much better. But yeah, every square, what are, what are we in metric? No, we're not. <laughs> Inch, millimeter, <laughs> whatever. I don't, whatever. Every bit of that thing was 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 looked at, you know, just gone over and smoothed out and refined. So it's like Anthony's saying, you lay them side by side, they actually look quite a bit different. But yeah, if you, they're but, still called the Adamas, yeah. they still look like it. So it's you still want, instantly you recognizable, it. exactly. Right. You don't yeah. want to change it. Yeah. I think they turned out great. The fixed blade is back as well, but I was actually really surprised by this mini and how how much I've I've kind of taken to it, especially the feel in the hand. It's you know it's a mini knife, but it's not a sub three inch knife like our other minis. But tell us a little bit about this guy. Yeah, I mean it's the same thing. I mean that would that's a very durable, almost uh, you could call it kind of a hard use mini. I mean it's a uh, some people call them little. Little big knives. Yeah, I know Shane. Shane actually has several little big knives in his custom lineup, and you know we talked to him about this, and it it, it just kind of added to the whole platform. As Anthony was saying, you know, mini knives are popular um, just for everyday tasks. They don't take up a lot of room. They're lighter weight, uh, but that still has the presence, kind of the prominent look of the Adamas. And yeah. so, you know, when you go to shrink something down from full size, it's not as easy as just scaling the model down. You still have to keep a lot of the proportions intact. You got to try to move components around a little bit to get it to look just like the, the, the full size one without compromising, you know, the, the strength and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, there, again, that was one, we just kind of, it was a new knife, but we were able to kind of go through the whole thing and, and re, you know, make it look like a custom. So I think that would, that's going to be a really fun one. I think people are really going to enjoy that just because it's, way easier to carry yeah yeah and it's 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 a it feels like a full-size knife in hand even though it's called it a mini, it's a, it feels like a full-size uh blade in hand and uh it 
feel substantial when you're holding it. So. Yeah, it's it's not it's not miniature, even though it's the the yeah. mini ver. It's kind of like the the mini crooked uh, mini crooked river folder you yeah. guys have. I'm like, well, it's yeah, more like absolutely. a medium, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But no, I mean, I Almost I get many. a full grip on that knife. It feels really good, and it's not a large knife, but it's still a full sized cutter for sure. Yeah. And obviously crew wear, you got the edge retention, the toughness. It's a cool steel. People want it. It's it's very, uh, it's just a very good all around steel for this type of hard use knife, which, you know, D2 is good, but, you know, you get a little bit yeah. better properties on the on Yeah, the like D, so. D2 kind of fit the, uh, the attitude of that knife. And this is right. like a perfect next step, a perfect evolution. Yep. It's still a great yep. pairing for sure. It's going to be good. Nice. And the auto versions are back as well. Is that correct? Yes. Awesome. Whole that range. Correct? That's great. Right. Yeah. The whole deal. We, we got the yeah. whole thing on this one. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Well, speaking of autos, um, you guys have a couple in your hands that I don't hear. Do you want to talk about those real quick? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah. This is the, uh, the Claymore. Let me get you a close up on here. So this is the new Claymore. Um, the colorations, the final colorations are a little different. I was mentioning this before uh, we started here, but this is the uh, R and D knife, which is kind of cool to have an R and D knife. So oh, it's yeah. got the satin blade. And a black handle, but you know, you're going to see some different colorations uh, with the handle in Ranger Green, black handle. Um, this one obviously is called the Claymore. It was inspired by the Claymore mine. So you have some pretty literal references to that with mm -hmm. your, uh, we should call it ball bearing texture. Uh, you have some Morse code up here that may have something to do with FTE. Something I was, towards the enemy. You know, I was going to ask saying, about that. <laughs> add to it. It's, it's the whole, it's the whole picture, you know, but again, this is a very, very, um, dur you know, much like the Adamas family. This is one of our, I think this is the strongest, the strong, yeah. so far to date, the strongest push button auto mechanism that we have. Interesting. So even though it's plastic, you know, it's a, it's a nylon, um, it, it's, you know, it's not, it's not metal or anything but it, it is very, very strong. I mean, the way it was designed and engineered, it, it, it really worked out. So there's just, there's just a lot of little hints to the uh, kind of the, to the modern tactical industry, obviously, you know, there's a lot of polymer in, in tactical gear. And so mm -hmm. we wanted to play off of that, but it's not, uh, you can't, you can't feel it here, but it's not an overly heavy knife. So you get, you know, you get, you know, a good feel, but it's not, uh, it's very, very durable. And we're going to, we, we see this as being a very, um, a very solid contender for this year. So, yeah. um, well, I think and it, also if you want to see this real quick, the action is ridiculous. You got to be kind of careful yeah. to hold on to this one. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. It really I, mean, you, kicks. I can hear it through these headphones, man. That's just snapping yeah. and open. Yeah, there we go. I've seen it fly out of a few people's hands. Yeah. <laughs> it has. <laughs> um, we also have, we also have some nice details on the button. So there's some knurling so you can get traction if you're wearing gloves and it kind of adds to that. Um, you'll see a lot of these details in, you know, modern like tactical watches. We wanted to have, even though it was a plastic handle, we wanted to have some really good detail, you know, where your contact points are, you know, where you first, you know, grab and, and you know, touch the knife. And then also the safety is real easy to actuate uh, with gloves on. So you have a little red you know, dot there indicator. Mm -hmm. You can see when it's on or off. Um, but yeah, very, very secure, very, very secure in hand, especially if you're just using that. Do I see a little bit of contouring to that handle as well? There is, there's a bit, and it's actually a, a pretty, let's see if you can see that. It's a really comfortable handle. It looks very aggressive and kind of pointy, but it's, you know, the way it, the way it rests in your hand uh, is actually pretty darn comfortable for the size of knife, mm -hmm. this type of knife. So you get a really good blade to handle ratio on this one. And um, yeah, it's going to be a really fun one to see how this does. And, and I think you just have to, you really have to get into yeah. hand to kind of appreciate it. I think well, too. it looks like good action. And if you're getting the strength you're talking about without it being really like too hard to carry, I mean, I think that sounds like a good combination to me from here right. anyway. Yep. <laughs> and you, this comes in D2 steel. We were talking about D2. So it's a very tough steel. So, uh, you're good to go on that. Was that CPM D2 on those? C CPM D2, correct. So the powdered correct. version of that. So it's probably gonna be a little bit tougher than just your bog standard D2. D2. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah, very nice. Yep. Yep. And what about uh, there's a new OTF you guys have as well, yes? There is. And I have that one right here. Excellent. So this is the Ohm, spelled O M. And so this is a little something different for us. You know, we don't we haven't really done an OTF this small before, but you know, there's kind of a 
I don't know, we want to do something fun. And, you know, this is, makes a really good, I mean, it's a non, what do you call it? Non-threatening uh, OTF, I guess you could say. So you were, you were making kind of reference to that before, carrying things at work, you know, obviously check with your laws and, you know, your rules and stuff. Yeah, don't get into trouble, anybody. <laughs> don't get into trouble. Yeah, we don't want to put anybody into trouble. But the blade is, it's very, very small, tiny, and, and it's just kind of, it's a really fun, um, you know, fidgety, you know, type knife. So and I also have a, uh, an R and D, uh, prototype right here as well. So, uh, this is in the blue steel coloration and we also have it in uh, black as well. Um, but this is just going to be fun for people to, it's, I mean, it's, it weighs nothing. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just fun to play with and, it, and it's functional. They do work. Um, but you know, it's, it's just something that doesn't look super tactical and scary and yeah. you can have an OTF. It's kind of yeah, cool. About what size is that, uh, is that blade? I don't have the spec sheet here in front of me. You know, I have the spec sheet and I don't have it pulled up, but uh, <laughs> do you know what it is? Do you know what it is offhand? I, I don't know the length exactly. I apologize. <laughs> we'll put a, we'll you put a little graphic up in the corner. Yeah. Graphic, Thomas yeah, is good at that sort of thing. I think it's just over two inches. It's really pretty small. Yeah. It definitely doesn't look uh, sub two inch. So it's not going to be one of those California compliant California, models, no. but no, it's just over that. I believe. Sorry, California. We'll, we'll get Thomas to put the steel up there in the corner <laughs> as well. So we know it's what... cool. Very cool little knife. I'm, uh, I'm kind of bummed. I don't have the, uh, one of the samples here in front of me. I'm, I'm, I'll look forward to getting that one when they, uh, when they are released. Um, well, so I actually do have one auto here in front of me. And that's the new auto fact. Yeah. So we had the original fact a few years ago, we released that and that was the manual one and it was a popular knife. I mean, it, people really kind of liked the modern, um, the modern stiletto mm -hmm. aesthetic of, the, of that knife. And it was just, um, Oh, there was some different uh, terminology that people used to describe that style of knife, but just a fun knife to have really easy to carry really thin. Um, so we decided to kind of take that modern stiletto, uh, take it to the logical conclusion. So, so yeah, I mean, it's yeah. like, we were like, why don't we, why don't we do an auto? We yeah. should. So we did. <laughs> and it feels good. It's, it kicks hard if I remember, right. It's been a while since I've handled that one, but, um, I think should have some pretty good action. So yeah, yeah you have a, an Axis Auto and your carbon fiber inlay and aluminum uh, kind of bolsters on that thing. So just a very classy, you know, logical iteration for that knife, I would think. Yeah. And one of the advantages, of course, being an Axis Auto that a lot of push button autos don't have is when you combine it with the clip, especially completely ambidextrous too. Lefty, lefties like it, yep. yeah. Yeah, you got that yep. spine mounted sure. safety right there. Works when it's open yep. or closed. Yeah. Yep. That's a lot of length there. I mean, this is close to a four inch blade and it's not going to, it's 90 V as well. So yep. a lot of uh, usable edge and not a lot of room in the pocket. Right. It's, yeah. It rides tight to your to back, back of your pocket. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Very nice. So speaking of that, uh, that Axis Auto, we've got another one here, a new Presidio 2 automatic. So the Presidios came out, uh, it's been out for a couple of seasons now. So we just decided to take this one to uh, the next next coloration. So I mean, obviously you have that FDE handle, a uh, very cool colorway. Again, a, kind of a nice progression of this product line in the first place. So we've already done the Presidio Auto, but this just gives you another, another color variant uh, to look for. So it, it should be a, a really nice addition to the family yeah. that's already there. For sure. I mean, I've, I've always liked the handles on these nice and neutral folks on this channel. If you're, if you guys are regular, they know, I like this. I put the, uh, the CF elite Presidio in my top 20 list from last year. It's just a solid design for just about everything out there. Yeah. And it's, it's a bit heavier, you know, compared to, you know, your bug outs and even, you know, your, you know, the Claymore and stuff, but it's a very, it's solid in hand and it's very, uh, it's a robust platform. I mean, it really is. It's yeah. made to be, I mean, the Presidio has always had that history of being a, a hard use uh, military based knife. And so we just kind of continued that trend on with the second generation. Yeah, that's very nice. Very nicely put together. It's probably not, uh, well, it definitely gives you a, a, a confident feel in the hand. Uh, the Adamus th does though as well. I think for folks who are looking for the utmost, maybe go for that knife, but this is still a fantastic yeah. design. Yeah. Well, very, very cool. Very good utilitarian. Well, I've got uh, a couple of fixed blades to kind of round things out today. And I don't know, it's either the mini Adamus or this knife, the meat crafter is my favorite of the new releases. Tell, tell me a little bit about this guy. 
Yeah, so the new 15500 Meat Crafter. Uh, so this will be our second iteration of the Meat Crafter uh, that we brought to market. Uh, the first uh, edition that we did of the Meat Crafter was uh, an addition we brought to the market with Steve Vernella and uh, Steve Vernella was worked with in the very beginning of the, uh, you know, the design with this knife with Ryan. And, uh, you know, we wanted to build a knife that was, you know, in between a fillet knife and a bony knife. So something that, you know, had a bony knife profile, but the flexibility, some flexibility of a fillet knife. Uh, but really this knife is designed to, you know, take your game from field and bring it into your, you know, kitchen to process for the freezer, get it ready for the barbecue, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you may need to, you know, have your final prep of your wild game or if not wild game, whatever you have as far as meat goes. Um, but just a great overall uh, fixed blade that we're adding to the hunt line. Um, this particular version uh, incorporates a Santa Prime handle. So uh, from a grip standpoint, you know, if, if your hands are wet, slippery for any reasons, um, provides a great, you know, uh, texture for you as well. Um, there's thumb pads that have ridges on there. Um, so you kind of know where your thumb is on the on the handle as well. Um, just overall great ergonomics. Um, and then blade steel, we have CPM 154. And then we're also uh, including our new edge geometry that we've introduced called Select Edge. So it's a 14 degree, 28 degree included edge angle, um, which is just razor sharp mm -hmm. out of the box. And uh, yeah, just really excited about this knife. It's just a great all around performing fixed blade for uh, preparing your game for the freezer. Yeah. And I think even for those out there who might not be hunters at all, if you were looking Absolutely. for a Benchmade kitchen knife, this would have yep. a lot of applications, butchering. It doubles, yeah. It doubles for kitchen knife, you know, cutting up a tri-tip, cutting up a brisket, mm -hmm. cutting up a turkey, you great, name it. Great um, barbecue you, knife, yeah. Yeah, it, you can use it for just about anything. Um, but yeah, just a great all-around knife. Super great. lightweight. Yeah, great slicer. I mean, it's re really thin blade stock there with that full flat grind and, of course, the narrower edge angle. I'd say a moderate amount of flex. It's not like super yeah, flexible, yes. just enough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's kind of the research we found with that is that there was a lot of kind of unsaid crossover between a fillet knife in that size and a boning knife mm -hmm. in that size. And so that little swedge that you see on the top. That was done by our, our engineering team. We, we added that at the end of the project because we wanted to get a, if you, if you actually put that on the table and you put, and you don't want to just, you know, smash it yeah. down, but if you, if you want a little bit of flex, you'll notice that it, it's uniform the whole way through. So that was actually designed because uh, we had some other iterations of this thing where it was like flexible at the end, but real rigid in the, you know, tor towards the handle. And so we, they just kept working with that shape. And I mean, obviously it's a clean shape and it looks really cool, but it actually gives you almost a perfect, uh, you know, we call it a geometric flex. Try it. Yeah. No, I it was doing that earlier. Whole, whole yeah. Way. Yeah. You can so absolutely very, see that. And of course, very, very uh, engineered in. It's yeah. pretty cool. And of course, that's going to remove that, uh, that kind of crisp spot on the spine as well, which if you're going through meats, it's going to help it when you're kind of going around a corner, so to speak. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Unless you rotate it a little bit. Yeah. Very hydrodynamic, yeah, I like to say. Know. Yeah. yeah, the other thing to note is the sheath as well. Yeah, so, sheath. Um, there's a it's a two tone sheath, orange and black. Um, orange side is you know if you do put it down on the ground, easy to find. Uh, and then you know we design you know there's actually a thumb imprint um, where the where the knife enters the sheath, so you can easily press your thumb and you know you're not ripping the you know a lot of knives where you have to just yeah. grasp it and really yank. Yeah. It this is just super easy, deployable, and uh, you know safe. And that's the, I would say the biggest part of that. And, uh, you know, either can carry it in your pack if you needed to, um, you could put a nylon webbing through it, a tech lock, if you wanted to, um, carry it on a pack, whatever, um, or just toss it in, you know, a kitchen drawer, or however you yep. want to carry it. So. I have a feeling this is going to make its way into a, uh, a lot of, uh, barbecue teams arsenal. And this, with that, you can <laughs> just throw it right in the box and you're on your way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very cool. I'm I'm digging that one a lot. Well, last but not least, we've got a new SOCP fixed blade as well. Yeah, so we got the mini sock P on this one. This is, um, you know, this is Greg Thompson obviously came up with this quite a few years ago. It's been in the line for quite a few years, been very 
popular. It's a, it's a you know, especially for his training programs, um, the SOCP training programs. But, you know, with civilians getting into this thing, you're, you're, there was kind of a request for making one that was even easier to conceal, like let's say in a waistband, say you're a jogger, you know, the civilian application for this shorter one is actually a little bit better than the full size one. You know, the full size one is meant to go in a in behind Molly on a plate carrier mm -hmm. and in with your kit, more tactical. Uh, but there was kind of a request and he was getting a sense that people were really wanting something that was just easier to put that sheath in. And if you tuck it inside the waistband, you can kind of kick it sideways and it really carries uh, not you don't even hardly see it. Yep. And so. Uh, we're just seeing some different demographics being interested in this type of thing. So, um, and he, you know, that, that was kind of his, um, his pitch to us. Yeah. And I think it's, it's going to do really well for people who don't want, uh, who almost want more of a pocket carry or something that's just easier. Like I said, the original one, it was just too long in, in a way for civilian type use. I don't, I don't really know if it's marketed yeah. to civilians, but we just see a lot of interest in that type of, uh, thing. So. Yeah, I so think the sheets put together really nicely. You've got this nice J. It's not so much a pocket clip, but it's kind of a J hook going on here. Yeah. So it's gonna, yep. you know, work well inside the waistband, Clamp, yeah. like you mentioned. Pocket carry, like you mentioned. I didn't even think about that, but absolutely, that like, would work. It depends on your pocket. Some pockets might be too shallow for that, sure. right? But I mean, if you, but you know, some pockets obviously are gonna be shallower and won't be able to get in there. But inside the waistband, um, you know, and that's how. When we talked to Greg Thompson, that's how he carries the full size sock pee a lot mm -hmm. of times. So this just, this was just kind of, you know, again, a natural progression or evolution of that uh, design. So um, it, it's pretty, it's a pretty cool little knife. Yeah. Just enough edge there. And of course, people just are going to be able to neck carry it if you want to. You've yep. got a few extra lanyard mm -hmm. holds there. Yeah. It's very nicely put together. Nice and, and strong integral construction here, 440C. Yep. Yeah. And like you said, if the sheath... The sheath is the main thing. If it it has to bite down and clip onto whatever you're clipping it onto, otherwise the knife doesn't come out as easy. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the main. So we really wanted to make sure that was you know squared away for people. So yeah, for sure. I've got actually um, this little leather piece right there. Is that anything? Yeah. So the leather piece can go on there. And so if you are doing this inside the waistband situation, um, I don't know if you concealed carry or do anything like that, you'll know that, you know, things start rubbing up against you and it hurts and, you know, wrecks your, you know, hurts your skin. So that thing will go on there and give you a nice soft leather backer. What do you call it? A backer to uh, keep that thing from digging in. Cause you can see the top of that knife is pretty sharp. I mean, yeah. it'll start digging into your, into your, into your side or your belly. Yeah, that's a nice little kind of added touch right there that yeah. I probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't have even thought about. But yeah, that would definitely help for sure. I mean, it's one thing if you tuck a shirt in or whatever, but if you don't want it, if you don't have a, a t-shirt under there, then it's going to, those knives will dig in. So yeah, and we don't help. want that. Nope. nope we want to have it when we want it. So we don't want it to be uh, uncomfortable or else we're not going to carry it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, that's about that's all right. I've got uh, in front of me right now. Uh, anything else you guys want to add that we just talked about? Oh, I think uh, one thing I was going to say about the sheaths uh, this is I think you'll see an overall kind of effort towards better and and really f awesome sheaths this year. I mean, Anthony really pushed for that with the hunt line, and you saw that on the meat crafter. And you know, just for safety, you know, you're not pulling on it, but you'll see that across the line is just an attention to detail uh, on the new sheath system. So I think that's going to be something that people can look forward to going forward with, with any time we do a sheath. So a lot of feedback in the market for those. So, um, good on Anthony here for uh, pushing that and, and, uh, <laughs> get, get those down. So I like them. I, I really like the sheet. The new sheets are fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, uh, to kind of go over these with our audience and show them kind of what's in store. Um, Folks out there, yeah. if you're looking to get your hands on these knives, we or we will leave links in the description. And all of this is available for pre-order right now, except for that mini bug out, which actually, as we're filming this anyway, is in stock. So that's shipping now. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks thank for you. having us.